I hate those little piranhas or whatever. Such a nuisance. Yeah, you gotta hit them at like a very specific time. And they just clip. It's annoying. So Ian, I saw you were talking about rearranging your, your Zelda tier list now that you've played and completed Link's Awakening. If I may ask, whereabouts would you put Link's Awakening now that you've had the chance to play it? I don't have an official ranking. I know I've talked about my top three a bunch. And I know it's some combination of Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, and Breath of the Wild. And I may... I might actually drop... In terms of just, like, sheer personal enjoyment, I might actually drop Breath of the Wild... Not Breath of the Wild. I might drop... Uh, Link to the Past for Link Between Worlds. Nope, do not want... Oh, and I can't do anything here. Okay. I may need a little more time to let it settle, but I'm thinking top tier. Wow. Like, not number one, but in the grouping of games that I would consider the best of the best. Huh. Interesting. I think... Yeah, between my top three. Okay, let's say top four? I guess, because, yeah, I'd have... Oh man, I'm, I'm messing this up. So I don't think it's better than Breath of the Wild. I don't think it's better than... I don't think it's better than Ocarina of Time. I don't think it's better than Link Between Worlds. Um, I probably enjoy this one more than I... Well, I really enjoyed Link to the Past, and it was really adventurous for the time. I think it would be around there. I don't think I could ever actually rank the ones in my top tier, though. Okay, that's fair. Hey. Yeah, at the time when I was doing the Fire Emblem tier list, I was like, I can't rank these right now. It's also too early. Um, I think based on my later experiences of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I think it is a top tier game. I don't think it's number one. Well, I understand there are, for a lot of people, it's their favorite. It's easily the best-selling of the bunch, and... It's amazing that that game inspired so many people to pick up the franchise. But I think there there's... I have enough criticisms for me to be like, yeah, this is not... that game. I don't think there's anything I can do in this room right now, so we'll let that go. Let me go get this. I have a feeling I'm going to get stuck horribly in this dungeon. I remember getting stuck pretty bad in this one. I did figure it out eventually, but yeah, this one's kind of trippy in the ways you have to subvert the, the left-right puzzles. Or the, the blue-orange puzzles. And I don't have the thing yet, so let's not even bother. And smash some more pots because we need supplies. Give me those. Some parts in particular would be nice. Thank you. I don't think it's what I wanted it to be, which is, was a fusion of the Fates games mechanics, Echo's presentation, and Path of Radiance storytelling. But it did some very cool new things that I think do make it stand out as a particularly good Fire Emblem game. But as you said, probably not the best. Yeah. 
And I think that's totally okay. I, I, it is another great Fire Emblem game that did do some new stuff. And people will remember that new stuff and appreciate it for what it did. I think there are aspects of it that are probably better than any other Fire Emblem in the series. I think the... The depth in which they... They fleshed out those characters is, yeah, bar none, the best. Huh, how? Hey, there we go. And we got a map. Get the thing. Okay, it's good to know I can just throw a bomb over and take care of that whole situation. Oh no, that's not jump. In life stuff, um, also gaming related things, I'm going to a game convention this weekend. I know we've talked about it off and on for months now. Even when they don't present it as being a teacher in future titles, I definitely think they should keep the character training system. Yes, I do appreciate that. And I'm curious to see what parts they keep and, and cut next time around. I think that's a pretty good po that post idea right there. I don't know if we collab on that or... You guys, we do that separately or whatever. I think the idea of, like, here are the parts of Fire Emblem Three Houses that should carry on in future entries in the series. Oh. All right. So we can't do anything in that room, but we can flip the switch. Which convention are you attending? EGLX, the Electronic Game and Lifestyle. I think it's Lifestyle. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, EGLX in Toronto. It's, yeah, the... Going to be at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. It's... I think it's just South Hall, which still, uh, like, a big venue. Tens of thousands of people probably going to be in attendance. Uh, it's an event sponsored by... Uh, Nintendo will be there. Microsoft will be there. I haven't even thought about what Nintendo games are going to be at this event. I'm guessing Luigi's Mansion will be there. Probably no need to have Link's Awakening. Though Nintendo's weird about that. Because I've been to conventions where they're demoing games that are months old. Like, I remember going, going to a Fan Expo and having my Splatoon cosplay on. And Splatoon had been out for months. <laughs> And they were still... They had a truck with Splatoon, like, built into it. So that was a whole thing. So yeah, maybe Link's Awakening is in there just because it's... Still, I guess, new enough. Alright, we should go and open a chest. Can we... Yes! Yes, we can do that. Da -na -na -na. Oh, we got a beak. All right, now what? <laughs> I can't lift anything. Oh, I have the key, so we should be going all the way over here. That's what. Uh, what else is happening? Some people that you may know. Oh, hold on. Oh. Uh, Chris Wilson from Cyanide and Happiness is going to be there. Uh, the the crew from Kind of Funny Games is going to be there. That's a lot of fun. Hey, thank you so much, Player Two Star, for renewing your sub. Eight months, currently on a seventh month streak. Fantastic. Awesome. Always appreciate the support. Thank you, Randy. Also, look, yeah, let me hit that air horn for you. And so yes, I'm actually going with Randy to EGLX uh, this upcoming weekend. 
he will be there with me and we will try some stuff. Apparently I missed a month and that oh that'll always bother me. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. You'll get that one year badge and it'll be a okay. Yeah, I think Laura's still working on badges for me for like the loyalty badges and I think they're going to be neat. I think they are very on brand for the show. And especially, or, yeah, for the channel, especially with regards to, uh, how we treat, like, wi tokens of winning on this channel. Let's say that. But yeah, Randy, how are you doing, uh, this evening? Alright, let's go open this door. I we've... We spent a weirdly long time. Like I feel there are dungeons in this ca in this game where you get four or five keys right away, and here we just played like the last 15 minutes and got nothing. There we go. That was a really late chime. Oh. Doing all right. Still have not gotten anywhere in this game. Oh man, we are getting clipped. Ah! Just take my ball and I'm going home. There we go. Where are you? Where are you at now? Where are you at? Hmm. What? What now? What now? No. Hmm. I consider the latter half of the game to have something of a difficulty spike. Like starting at the fifth dungeon, they feel a lot trickier to navigate. Agreed. I think it's the seventh dungeon in particular drove me nuts, where you're on multiple floors and trying to figure out how things line up between the different floors uh, drove me nuts. And I felt like the dungeons in Link to the Past, a lot of them were of that multi-floor variety and having to backtrack and figure out how things line up and that's probably my biggest complaint of that game oh isn't this yeah there's a trick here right because this is just gonna take me back here that loops around right All right, what was I supposed to do again? So I can't throw the thing. I'm missing something and I don't remember what. Is it this chest right here? I know I can't go through here. Because I need to be... Did I not pick something up? I don't remember what I'm supposed to do here. After I beat that boss, hmm. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is not the thing I'm supposed to do, but we'll check. I will gut check just to make sure before I refer to a guide. this weird door over here. Nope, definitely not here. Hmm. It's probably something really silly, too.
Ah. Jump over. It's not this. And I can't break that. I know I can't go through here. I don't think I can go through there. All right, away we go. No, I know I can't get to that, that chest right now. What am I missing? I did the thing. Hmm. Can I just bring a pot over? Nope. Ah. No, that does not work. Okay. So in a world where that does not work, I have to pick up that elephant to break the thing. What is it that I can do right now, then? Awakening base shrine. I may need to call for backup here. What am I missing? Okay, I can go through here. I did that. Did that. break that. Can't go through there yet. Nope, nothing to do here right now. Huh! I... I appreciate that the dungeons in this game aren't as linear as usual compared to other Zeldas, but that also makes it harder to find exactly what you're supposed to go because there are so many more areas you can revisit to see if you're missing something. Agreed. And so now, we are in a, a bit of a pickle here. And I'm not exactly sure. Because it feels like all of the all of the areas have those sorts of doors where I have to break them by throwing the really heavy things. And I don't have the thing, but I beat the boss. So what did I miss? Face Shrine walkthrough. I know this is really bad form for streaming, but um, I also need this answer. So find the powerful bracelet. This is the thing I need. From the entrance, go left and head up. In this room, take out the mask mimic and stand on the top right orange tile. Boomerang the crystal. Wait. One. Two. Three, there's stairs? Hold on. Hold on. So, one. Oh. Entrance two, go to the mask mimic room, which is... Am I in it right now? No. It's this room. 
Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, come on. No! Nope. Oh, come on. Get to the other side there. Hmm. So, here. In, the, in this room, take out the Mask Mimic and stand on the top right orange tile. Boomerang the crystal. Bomb the wall on the right. What? I can just bomb this? No. What are you talking about? This is the Mask Mimic room, right? Yeah. Or this. I did bomb that room. Okay, it's something around here. Is it? Oh, man. Is there, like, a secret scare staircase or something? Wait! Was that it? Are you kidding me? All I had to do was kill those things? Uh... Okay. So yes, I was saying before we got horribly stuck, and if you're just tuning in, I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com, personal look at video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits, and we are playing Link's Awakening, and we're stuck on this side. Great. Let's try that again. Um, EGLX, so the creator of Cyanide and Happiness is going to be there, uh, Chris Wilson. Uh, the Kind of Funny Games crew is going to be there. I enjoy their stuff, and I should have marked this as well on the map. Let's do that. <laughs> Heart. Um, in particular, a uh, big fan of Greg Miller's. I've enjoyed his stuff since IGN Game Scoop. And so that'll be a lot of fun to... Uh, at least possibly see him in person. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, like, meet him or say hello or anything like that, but... That would be cool as well. Uh, other people there. Game Attack will be there. I have them all written down. Game Attack, Death Battle. I love Death Battle. Those videos are so good. Um, Elise Williams. Yeah, here we go. Shout out time. Who are like some of your favorite gaming creators on the internet? Uh, whether they're they're streamers, bloggers, YouTubers, maybe they run an Instagram that you really enjoy. Like, who are some of your favorites? Coincidentally, a friend of mine was just texting about a death battle that I guess went up today. <laughs> I should check that out. I haven't seen their videos in a bit, but I... It's always like a couple times a year I will remember, oh yeah, death battle, and then I'll just binge a bunch of their videos. This should be the thing. Once we get this thing... Yes! You got a more powerful bracelet. You can feel like... You feel like you could lift an elephant. I think one of the cop-outs of this game, if I were to be critical of it, is the fact that you don't get eight unique things across the different dungeons. It's mostly... Um, a couple of them are like, hey, you got the more powerful version of that thing. Oh, wait, I can do the thing now. Uh, okay, we'll do that. We'll come back later. Uh, some of my favorite creators on the internet. 
uh, besi besides you, Ian, at Adventure Rules, adventurerules.blog, also on Twitter at Adventure Rules, um, I am a huge fan of Trainer Tips on YouTube. It is my favorite Pokemon Go channel. I think Nick does fantastic stuff, kind of mixing uh, Pokemon Go tips and advice. He's super knowledgeable about Pokemon and Pokemon Go in particular. And he also just has like awesome video footage. It's very Casey Neistat in execution. Not a shameless plug if someone else does it. <laughs> Ta-da! Get that paper. You got 100 rupees. You're happy. What's all the way up here? Hey, we got a shell. Um, I've probably spent thousands of hours watching the D-Pad. They do franchise Let's Plays where they play through every single game of a given series. Zelda, Sonic, Mega Man. Ah, cool. I will write that down. The D-Pad. Uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels slash Twitch streamers is Maximilian. Uh, Max, Maximilian Dude. He makes amazing fighting game content. He also does a little bit of, like, other stuff. But, yeah, his fighting game stuff in particular is a big inspiration for me as a creator and kind of what I strive to be, at least with the video stuff. Like, I haven't... I think I still have a lot of work to do in terms of, like, trying to make compelling video content. I want to get to where... what he's doing. The type of stuff he's doing, and a lot of it's very... personal and, like, driven by his... his fandom of different franchises and stuff, but... Yeah, I really like what he does. Oh yeah, still can't go through there. The D-Pad are mostly known for their in-depth video about Sonic 3 plus Michael Jackson connection. Ah, okay. No! Nope. I could have just done that. Oh. Nope, that messed it up, Wolf. That <laughs> completely messed it up for me. I'm pretty sure that's not what I wanted. Wait, is it? Hold on. We can make stuff happen here. Other creators whose work I really enjoy. I'm going to have to look through like my YouTube list and see who I have. Uh, some other blogs that I follow. Uh, Double Jump, of course, but we, we talk about them all the time. They don't need any more love. Um, later Levels, I'm a big fan of her stuff. Uh, Kim and all the other people that write on there. On YouTube, I love... Um, this is not gaming related, this is music related. I'm a big fan of The Needle Drop and Anthony Fantano. I think that he has just a very uh, measured approach to music critiques and his outlook, his look at the music industry, I really appreciate. So many good content creators out there. This might be cliche. I love Dude Perfect videos. <laughs> I know those are like... Oh, I spent all day today listening to the 8-Bit Drummer. I love the 8-Bit Drummer! And it was cool. I got to see multiple panels of him IRL. Because, yeah, his, his stream is great. And I could watch that stream all day. Lots of great creators online. Um, I want to name more. Like, maybe after this dungeon, I'll just pull up my list and be like, here's everybody I like. Die already. There it is. Okay. 
can I jump now for a hot minute? Do, 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 do. I spent all day, yeah. Who else makes great stuff off the top of my head? Hey, there might be a chest here. And another one up there. All right. Side note: This is this um this is gonna take a weird. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Huh. Now, how? How do I do the thing? Get wrecked. At least that gets me out. But now I have to hit the switch. Am mm. I gonna have to go all the way across? There's no switch up here, right? I don't think there is. I love Vox. Oh my goodness. I've gone down a deep rabbit hole on Vox videos. In particular, there's a series on music that I think it's... I can't remember her name. She does this whole series of, like, music videos that just kind of break down, like, the history and the science of music and popular music, and it's so cool. And she was the one... The smooth jazz story that I talked about a couple weeks ago. That was her video on Vox that I really, uh, really enjoyed. Alright, let's get out of here. Hopefully now we've got enough of the thing done. I don't think that was it. There's... Oh, yeah. There it is. The one smart thing I did today. Alright. Secret medicine. Apply it when something bad happens. But now... I'm still missing stuff. What am I missing? How do I fix it? Because I don't think I can do anything over here right now. There's probably like a stairwell that I have to go through on this side in order to do that thing. I do have an extra key though. And can we get over here? <laughs> So that gets us over here. I think this is also a heart. Let's mark that as such. I hated finding secret medicine when I already had some applied. That's the main disadvantage of it, being a single-use item instead of having the fairy bottles function like they normally do in Zelda. Agreed. Alright, so... Um... How now? I don't think I can get to here from here. Like, I think I've done everything I can do in this room. Here, let's talk to this guy, see what he says. Hop on top of the crystals to move forward. Sage advice. Oof. Oh. Uh. 
I think somewhere around here is the answer. Let's go back, explore. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. I think I might have something. I think. I'm going to feel so stupid when I don't <laughs> actually have the thing. Um, other creators I've enjoyed. I enjoy watching Philip DeFranco videos sometimes. Just as a sort of like alternative look at the news and other things popping up in the world. No, this is not where I want to go. This way. Well, first, let's go break the... The thingamabobber. I... Oh, yeah, I read that. Uh, Ian, um, what do you have going on this weekend? Anything exciting? There was that super narrow hallway. Oh, we did that already. Darn it. I thought I had it. I totally don't. Alright, how do we... Don't tell me I'm lost again. I'm going to be very salty. <laughs> yeah, this is not... We don't need that. How do I get here? I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I could be wrong. Spooky game day with a group of friends. We're going to get together and play a bunch of vaguely Halloween-themed board games, as well as playing a session of tabletop RPG... A session of a tabletop RPG called Ten Candles. Interesting. I've not heard of Ten Candles, uh, but yeah, that sounds fun. Board games are always great. Uh, what are the vaguely Halloween-themed games? I'm curious. I have a couple of pretty Halloween-themed games. <laughs> I could dig those up after. Maybe they'll do some board game show-and-tell. Uh, solve the puzzle, collect the rupees, return to the entrance. What? I haven't even seen this. Com compass room go left? Hmm... I got the compass and the... Sp Climb the stairs, hit the crystal, which turned blue, follow the walkway. At this point, we're going to head back to the entrance and solve the two puzzles along the way. Doing that will get you rupees, which will be used later to purchase a song. Pick up the White Knight chess piece. I haven't even seen the... <laughs> Small key, stone beak, map, mask mimic room. We've done that. Done all that. Enter the space where the eyes have walls. What? Flying towels and the owl statue. What? Throw an elephant at the pot door. We did that. We did this. Got that small key. Got the secret medicine. Locked door. Bomb wall. And we did, we did all of that out of order. Wow. Solve another chest knight puzzle. Stairs. Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, I'm not really an idiot. But we have to go over... My wife and I have Mansions of Madness as well as a zombie version of Flu Flux and Munchkin. I'm not sure what everyone else is bringing. So, something really cool. Um, in the Toronto area... There's an escape room place that's getting an officially licensed Mansions of Madness themed escape room. 
I can try and find the link. Uh, they posted it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but yes, we are get in, in the city, we're getting an official Mansions of Madness escape room. And Mansions of Madness is a game I've always wanted to play. It looks so cool with the app and stuff. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it, but that sounds cool. And it's fun, to your point about the guide and, like, the dungeons being more open-ended and not knowing where to go, or less linear. Uh, I play- there was, like, a whole bunch of stuff in the guide I did way before they did it. Which is part of why I got confused. Or at least it, it was a struggle to figure out what to do in the guide. Wait, what? Like, pick this up? No, that's not what I was supposed to do. There's supposed to be stairs... ...here. No. In this room? This room! There. Uh. There we go, and now we can open the door. Well, we can open a door. I don't know if I want to wait until all these are done before... Because maybe it opens that other door to the south? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah! Uh. Yes! Great. Two keys. Hmm... Uh-oh. I don't remember how you kill that thing. Is it just a hook shot? Or do you not... There it is. That was a <laughs> really rude amount of way of taking that out. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, um... Can I just kill these guys with the bow and arrow? Like, have I been doing- yeah, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. Great. Uh, and there's the boss key. Okay, so we can't do that yet. That's okay. Alright, I think it's all starting to come together. Finally. <laughs> I... I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, now we go up here. We open this one. Throw this elephant over here. There we go. Whoa. Nice. And now we go down here and let's mark this properly just in case. Just in case. Go diamonds.
Let's go up first. Really? It's gonna take that many arrows? Jeez. Okay, or one pot. Sure. Do I want to go down or... Let's go down first. Oh, jeez. Not these guys again. My favorite. Turn this way? Nope. Apparently, Link should just carry a sack of pots instead of a quiver of arrows. Yes! <laughs> Hyrule logic. Definitely need the hook shot. There we go. Alright, I think we're laughing now. I don't want to jinx it, but I think we're laughing now. Oh, isn't there... What was the trick to that, that particular one? I can't remember. I'm sure the owl will tell me. To open a treasure chest, use the pots around it. Oh, great. <laughs> oh. oh, no. 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 Oh, uh, no, I meant... I knew it had something to do with the pots. Are you serious? Now we've got to, like... That is very unfortunate. <laughs> I gotta run all the way back to the other side to get back to the... St I'm such an idiot. I am so sorry. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. In the meantime, what else can we talk about while I tra backtrack all the way across? Well, now that you know... May as well pay attention to whether or not the crystal is the color you need it to be, so you don't have to backtrack a third time. Yes. Man, I'm so salty about that. Okay, can we... Where am I... Now I'm confused again. Oh! I almost made this even worse. Down these stairs is the ones I want. Man, I was hoping we could get like two dungeons done today. I don't know. At this point, it's probably going to be one. And then... We'll talk for a bit and then close it out, but man. Yeah, I think we're probably going to need, like, two more streams before we finish this. Maybe we squeeze an extra win in next... No, I think we have time. I think we have... I think there's at least two more Wednesday streams before a Luigi's Mansion comes out. All right, let's try this again. Mm. 
And just for reference, I'm pretty sure this is the only chest in the game where you have to break it with a pot, right? Uh, and I don't remember what color I need it. Uh, we may have to backtrack again. Oh, wait. Now I can't get the thing at the top. Is it worth getting the thing at the top? Also, we should mark this. So this is this. Forget it. I'm not getting that chest at to the top. I don't care. <laughs> and I'm trying to think. Like, going back to EGLX for a sec. What games would even be, like, playable? Like, hot new games. I'm guessing Microsoft would have Gears of War. Because that's kind of their big title of the quarter. Nintendo would have probably Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion, probably not Pokemon. Pokemon would be nice, though. Um, Ubisoft is there. What's Ubisoft have right now? Oh, they've got Ghost Recon, which has gotten not so great reviews from what I've seen. I, I've not re I have played a total of one Ghost Recon game in my life, and... It was a uh, Graw Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. I played it for like half an hour and was like, "Nah, this isn't for me." <laughs> so, yeah, I'm I'm curious now. Like, what what are we even playing at this convention? It's weird. Like, I've been to a lot of geek conventions, like more broader pop culture stuff with comic books and. Or I have not done a, a video game one, specifically. For those just tuning in, I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com. Personal look at video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. Hey, dummy. Need a hint? My weak point is... Whoops, there I go, talking too much again. Facade. Man, I just took way too many tiles to the face. Also, just a heads up, I'm after this, after this dungeon. Oh, I get it because he's a face, but he's also a design carved in the sword. Boy, he's clever. <laughs> Okay, listen up. If the windfish wakes up, everything on the island will be gone forever. And I don't mean... And I do mean everything. I'm going to try something while I go and try and find some Halloween-themed board games. Um, Twitch has this new feature. allows me to control ads. And there's some benefits for uh, me running ads. And benefits for you guys... I'm going to try, try and play around with something while I go get board games. I don't plan on, like, doing ads every three minutes or anything like that. And also, for the record, I, I normally don't talk money. And I, I think this is funny. Um, since this is rolled out, the program where, like, Twitch affiliates get uh, paid from ads, I have made a total... Drum roll, please. I'm going to get an air horn ready for this. I have made a total of four cents. <laughs> mountain. This one annoyed the heck out of me. Something calls from the mountains. This was... Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, getting to this temple drove me nuts. Quit your job, man. You're sad. <laughs> I know, just raking it in. 
And it was funny, like, thinking about how much that is. Like, if I, I can't even split that with all of the people that were on Boss Rush. <laughs> There's like six of us and four cents. Woot! The many monsters of this island fear that the Windfish is about to awaken. The monster's power is real. They may conquer the island and destroy their foes. That day may come soon. Now, go to the mountain tower. Fly like a bird. Woo! Woo! Alright, what we're gonna do...